Okay, so I'm just filming this unedited um, just to get it out there because I'm far behind on some stuff here. Um, <clears throat> this is my February wrap up. I got nothing prepared because I said to myself that I have to prepare it. I'm just I'm just not gonna do it. So we're just gonna jump into it here. Um, raw thoughts. <laughs> See if I can remember back to February. Um, so for part of my Bible, I got my computer here in front of me with what I read. Uh, so, uh, yeah, for my Bible reading, I read uh, Corinthians 1 and 2 by Paul, and I still, I need, like, a, like, breakdown by a progressive Christian of Paul's letters, because I'm still having trouble with some of the stuff he says. Um, I'll just straight up say it. My problem with Paul is that he's like, what I'm writing is, like, from God, because I said it's from God, and I'm just like, well, does that mean that I can write a random letter to a church and be like, this is the word of God, because I'm saying it's the word of God, like, so it's just like, I'm a Christian, not a Paulite. <laughs> um, anyways, moving on, <laughs> I also read Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter, that's book two, in, uh, the Burning series, I believe it's called, and oh, I just wanted, I really thoroughly enjoyed it, I want to say that. But I also just wanted Evan Winter to give them a break. I'm like, can they go pee? Can they have a nap? Can they go to the bathroom? Can they eat something? It was just like constant action. And I loved it as a reader. But also as like a human being, I was just like, oh man, these poor people. Like, just, like he gets like a huge injury. And pretty much like his injury happens to his leg. It's not much of a spoiler. It happens within the first part of the book. And like, he's just like, screw it. And just like keeps on going. And I'm just like... <laughs> uh, but a lot of things happened in it that I was looking forward to happening since, like, the first book. Can't contain spoilers. So, the basic idea of the Fires of Vengeance, or the, or the first one, the Rage of Dragons, is that we follow this uh, society which is really divided steeply into different castes. And that affects, like, your physical ability as well. And so we follow this uh, Tao, this one, <clears throat> this one character, and his training to kind of defeat the nobility. Um, and the ways that he goes about doing that, which is really cool. My favorite part of the books. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to book three whenever that comes out. I read, so what, what I've done with larger books is that I've decided that instead of stressing myself out to read them all in one month, I'm going to divide them into parts. So I've divided the Bone Hunters into three parts. I've read part one <laughs> so far. Uh, I read, that was 398 pages. I think it's like book six or seven in the Malazan series. I've lost track at this point. Um, but we're back with like our original crew from the first uh, book there. Um, and this is the events after Dead House Gates. So like, is it House of... The book before this one, whichever one that was, took place like back in time. Um, but this one we're back in like, I guess the regular timeline. It sounds so confusing. And that's because like, if you don't read the books, it does sound very confusing. Like, what he does is he just, like, drops you in this situation, in this fantasy world, and this is like, hey, you know, figure it out. <laughs> um, and if you can't, <laughs> maybe don't read the book. Um, but it's, like, a military fantasy epic thing. I'm sorry, this chair is, it's, like, one of those circular chairs that I'm sinking right into it. Uh, so, yeah, um, I can't say much because, as I said before... We're in deep into the series at this point. Um, I highly recommend you pick it up if you like fantasy at all. It's really good. Um, yeah. I don't have anything in particular to say about it. Besides, I love Malazan. I love Stephen Erickson's writing. Um, so, yeah. I also read uh, When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Um, and this is... it. It's sold as a thriller... Um, but it's not a typical thriller, um, until like the last, like, I don't know, like 30, 50 pages. Um, but the, what you're learning up to that point is about black neighborhoods in, uh, New York and like the history behind, um, the ownership of, uh, black ownership of homes and first of all, how difficult that was. And, um, then, uh, what's the term where people come in, a gentrification, um, you know, and like 
the erasure of, of black history and stuff like that. So it was a very informative book and I really appreciated that. And then like, there's little tidbits here and there of like what's going to happen. Um, but like it, the end is just like pure action. Um, so yeah, like if you're going and looking for a traditional thriller, this is not it, but it is still a very good book to read. Uh, then I read Defect by Nino Cipri. This is book two in the Littenwald universe. Um, so it's not, it's not a direct sequel, uh, to the first one, which name is escaping me. Um, <laughs> but this one's really cool. We follow a guy who is, uh, made <laughs> to work in Littenwald. Um, Littenwald is a store much like Ikea, except there's kind of like this, it's like magical realism kind of, uh, in that everything seems like really ordinary. Um, I guess like urban fantasy might be another term for it. It seems like it's really like ordinary and then like random things are happening. Like a portal will open up to other worlds. Some of the furniture is alive. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's following him as he learns more about, um, especially the furniture and the living furniture. Um, and he joins like this team of, of people, um, that are responsible to, responsible for eliminating the threat of, uh, living furniture. Um, but it's got its twist. It's a good story. Uh, yeah. Um, again, another book that I split into three parts. Um, I read the first three parts of, or the first part of The Great House, uh, which is Riri for me, one of my favorite books um, by Mariam Petrosian. And this is about a group of students at uh, a boarding school, I guess, uh, is the name you can use for it. And all the students have um, physical disabilities. Um, that's kind of like, it's, it's not about that. <laughs> that's just kind of like the setting. <laughs> um, it's more about the it takes a lot of this idea of, of when you're a teenager um, and you're really seeing the world in black and white. Um, and it kind of has this idea of like those inside the house, the gray house and the outsides. And the outsides is scary, unwanted. And the insides is also scary <laughs> um, uh, once the book moves forward. Um, it's full of clicks, uh, but not in like... The traditional sense like it can be quite dangerous but like you're also really tight in personal friendships um and there's something more going on inside the house than just a boarding school i can't give too much away like the, the whole magic of reading it is discovering the uh the uh uncanniness of it i guess if you really like you know uncanniness this is a good book to read uh i listened to pet and i'm saying that very importantly you have to listen to pet by akwiki um by akwaki amizi um because the narrator his voice is pet like i can't i can't separate like that his narration and his voice for that character is just an embodiment of that character <laughs> like it's part of the characterization of him now part of his personality he's just he's a perfect voice for it so pet i should tell you uh is about a young girl who lives in a perfect utopia uh progressiveness you know uh awesome stuff is going on except you know maybe the adults have turned a blind eye to some stuff um and this monsters come out in the world and he's hunting <laughs> and uh i'm just gonna leave it at that because it's a short book uh, another short book i listened to um is diary of a void by imi yagi and uh this is an interesting book <laughs> it's about a, a woman in japan she's working and uh, she fakes pregnancy because she sees how it's not necessarily just benefits of being pregnant. It's like less workload on a, on the female in the society if she's pregnant, <laughs> but also more at, at the same time. Like it's a different it's a different aspect 
of, of um, womanhood uh, when you're pregnant uh, in Japan. <laughs> uh, so, like, she, the, the initial start point for her is that uh, she's, like, the only woman in her office, and they expect her to, you know, greet everyone, to go outside of her, out of her job description, to make and clean up uh, coffee and snacks and all this stuff for people, and to, to be the one taking notes. And she's just like, I'm sick of this. She's like, you know what, I'm pregnant, I can't stand smell coffee. And that just kind of, like, starts this whole, <laughs> this whole thing. And she carries it out, like, she fakes that pregnancy, like, right up to, like, uh, taking a maternity leave. Like, and you follow along the whole, the whole nine months that this stuff is happening. Um, and at one point I was like, is she actually pregnant? Like, I was so confused because it was very convincing. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a more of an examination of, like, misogyny and the uh, femininity and the role of women and mothers in uh, Japanese society. That is all the books I read in February. I'm going to look at comics which were quite a bit i read aqua corn cove by kay o'neill uh they did um the tea dragon society uh this one was more geared morality wise towards children too it was a very kind of simple morality of like don't overfish don't poison the ocean um but i enjoy her art um so yeah and then i read jim henson's labyrinth tales which if you know the labyrinth the movie these were just like short, really short <laughs> tales um, about different uh, different characters from that show movie. I read Oxymoron, um, which was uh, an anthology of this supervillain who hates contradictions. Um, yeah, it was quite violent. I read volume one of The Ballad of Yaya, which is a historical fiction that takes place during a bombing of China can't remember what year that was um and we follow this little girl and this little boy um as they're lost in the streets while this is happening i also read lobster johnson a chain forged in life um which is he's a character from hellboy this was another anthology thing i've learned through reading the oxymoron on and this lobster johnson that i don't really like anthologies <laughs> um the stories are too short and uh, I think you got to know t more about the characters in order to understand them better. And, uh, yeah. Then I read Twig. Um, this was uh, created by Scotty Young, who did I Hate Fairyland, which I absolutely adore. Um, but this is more geared towards children. <laughs> uh, it's not as violent. And it's about this little character who has to set things in place so that the hero can save um, the world. And it's so cute. Uh, the art is fantastic and beautiful. I read... Uh, JLA 80 page giant from 1998 just something random I found online I was anthologies but because I'm familiar more with the Justice League um, I was able to understand it more I really like the character um, we're following th the three female uh, superheroes and their names are escaping me right now but they go to um, Wonder Woman's home and kind of like team building. <laughs> uh, I also read Pug Davis by Rebecca Sugar. They created Steven Universe, which I haven't seen, but I've, it's kind of been on my list. Um, and this is about a uh, astronaut that's like a pug human hybrid going on adventures with his uh, his companion named Blouse, and it's really quite sweet. Uh, and then lastly, I read Midnight Radio by Yolanda Zanfardino. Zanfar Sorry, I didn't prepare as I said before. Um, and that is um, about four different stories I believe we're following like, whose people are all affected by this midnight radio broadcast. Um, it was interesting, but as I was doing my, like writing down everything that I was reading, I was just like, I can't remember some of the stories from this. Um, but it deals with different like social issues and stuff. Uh, yeah, so that is all that I read for February. I can't believe I'm this far behind. I'm sorry. Let me know if you can remember what you read in February. <laughs> let me know what your favorite thing that you read in February was. And thank you for watching.